From economic terrorism to medical terrorism, the U.S. has been on a warpath with Iran since 2018. That's when its President Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal and reimposed sanctions on this country as part of his maximum pressure campaign. Now even food and drugs are barred from entering Iran as far as the U.S. is concerned. Sanctions and a government coming to the end of its second and final term. What can it do now? Analysts say clean up house and cure the economy. But sanctions remain a bold and emboldened factor with the government. How it might step over that hurdle to take action is the prime question today. Stay with me, Leila Faramarzi, on Iran Today to hear what the experts have to say. Donald Trump has less than a month in office and Hassan Rouhani, the Iranian president, less than a year. In his little time, Trump is dumping all he can on Iran by way of sanctions. Sweeping sanctions, he calls them. That's a lot for Rouhani to sweep away by election time in June 2021. He is adamant Iran's economy flailing is down to U.S. sanctions. Mr. Shagori is an economist and academic manager. Regarding the issue of improving the business environment, we have to build the necessary infrastructure and regulations. The law on improving the business environment dates back to 2010, but it has been abandoned while it could be revived and pushed ahead. In 2008, the law on the implementation of Article 44 of the Constitution was adopted four years after it was instructed by the leader. The necessary ground has been prepared for its implementation. Necessary institutionalization has been done as well. We can take faster action wherever institutional ground and infrastructure is ready. Therefore, we can start developing the private sector due to the availability of the relevant institution. I mean the legal infrastructure is ready. So is the case with the business environment and eradication of poverty. We can remove the administration's indiscipline. We can partly curb the runaway inflation through regulating the administration's banking and taxing systems. Economists on the show will say whether they primarily blame sanctions for the economic downturn or mismanagement within Iran's own system of governance. Mr. Mostakhdamin Hosseini is an economist who, for his professional counsel, has been part of both reformist and conservative governments. In a few words, how many percent would you say sanctions are to blame for Iran's economy and how many percent mismanagement? I believe that the main problem is lack of competent management because nothing serious has been done in economic terms. We had no planning for conditions of sanctions, the present circumstances where the US has quit the JCPOA. The weakness of our economy is that we have made temporary decisions instead of planning for a long-term perspective. Therefore, I attribute the current economic problems to the administration's lack of planning and I think sanctions come next by far. Mr. Abdul Maliki is an economist and professor. Do tell of the government's economic plans and implementations over the past seven years. In the budgeting system, uh, we have some problems, some internal problems. For example, this huge amount of budget does not have any uh, positive effect on the uh, uh, enhancement of the national production or employment. And so some uh, problems in the uh, economic culture. Uh, so uh, we mean the most important problems of Iranian economic are not the external ones, but are the internal ones. Uh, and uh, we may analyze this uh, and say that uh, the internal obstacles against Iranian economy are four times stronger than the external problems. To solve a problem, it's imperative to eradicate the root of the evil. But just how bad is the problem? I asked that the situation of the Iranian economy be verified. 
The current economic conditions in the country are not favorable. There are numerous reasons for it. Our economy is feverish and it has not yet been relieved from its fever to opt for prosperity. By economic fever, I mean stagflation. Therefore, we have to prepare the ground for the economy to get out of recession and stagflation and go towards prosperity. The government complains U.S.-imposed sanctions have cost this country $200 billion in less than two years, $100 billion for lost crude oil revenues, and $100 billion of investment money, that is. But in the same breath, it claims that that won't hold Iran back, just as other forms of sanctions couldn't over 40 years since the Islamic Revolution of 1979. How might the Rouhani government now step over the hurdle holding back its economy, a hurdle called sanctions? Rather, how might it revive Iran's economy? The administration has never tried to benefit from expert views. You can go and ask other economists at universities and research institutes. They have presented the administration with a plan, but the administration has sidelined them. These economists have directly or indirectly offered recommendations to the administration. The Iranian government has adopted a comprehensive strategy encompassing market-based reforms that are reflected in its 20-year vision document. Its reform strategies aim to reallocate and better manage oil revenues while increasing the resilience of the economy. Resistance budget and resistance economy are common jargon in the present administration's dictionary. What are the government's latest programs, the programs for its final year? No, at the last year of, the, of this government, uh, the government is speaking about uh, very good programs, uh, which we hope uh, it will be successful. For example, uh, the protecting of the capital market and supporting the stock exchange market uh, and um, one of the most important uh, plans of the government is uh, to enhance the endogeneity of the economy, for example, by uh, increasing oil and gas refinery capacity uh, and developing downstream sector of the oil and gas, and decreasing the effects of the coronavirus on the Iranian economy by preparing more financial helps for the producers and infected people and the poor uh, population. Iran decided in 1979 to get out from under the political and economic domination of imperialism and to run its internal affairs by relying on the efforts and power of its own people. It is natural that it would suffer the most intense pressure from superpowers, even undergo an economic war. Iran once again tried to rely on foreigners with the JCPOA or nuclear deal. That kind of blew up with the U.S. pullout and Iran decided to turn back to its own resources. But again, it is contemplating a 25-year deal with China. I asked whether that was any different to relying on the West. The government has lost faith in Western states. But have they really decided to decrease dependency on foreign states? Because they are turning to China, right? The deal with China, I think, is different from uh, actually increasing the dependency on the Western countries. Um, the Iranian strategy in economy is not to decrease the uh, relation uh, with other countries, but uh, the strategy is to the, uh, decrease the dependence of other countries. Now the uh, deal with China is uh, uh, no, the deal with China is a different situation. The, this is a win-win uh, actually deal with China. China will uh, transfer a lot of uh, capital to the Iranian economy and uh, the both countries will, will be uh, winners in this um, actually deal. We should take care about the uh, um, export from China during this deal. Uh, this deal should not increase our imports from China and it will be harmful for Iranian industries. As far as investment in industry, manufacture or production goes, the country already has major industries such as automobile manufacture. We are talking industries almost demolished by corruption such as misuse of the Privatization Act 44. Retrieving and reviving those industries should work well for a show of governmental competence. 
As for actual private producers, they are mindful of production and selling. Because increasing imports, smuggling of goods, corruption and bribery make them uneasy. This is not to mention the secondary foreign exchange market which manufacturers are having to turn to. Foreign exchange rates are so high that they can't afford raw materials to import for manufacture and production. The spike in the price of the US dollar and other hard currency has also meant an increase in the cost of equipment and machinery. This in turn means increased manufacturing costs and produce too expensive to export. Ultimately, it will mean more layoffs. Many business owners have stopped selling inventories in their warehouses, as they never know when inflation might grow again, and as they cannot predict what policy the administration might decide on next. On top of this, businesses suffer working capital shortcomings when a credit squeeze means banks can't finance them either. All this is rooted in production, which would in turn depend on a powerful and developed private sector. It also requires eradication of corruption and extreme speculation, upgrading economic competitiveness and developing agricultural strategies. That has not happened yet. Our private sector is still experiencing these problems like extreme speculation. When a group of speculators are making profits without running any risks, no production will take place. Place. No money stock will flow into production when there are lucrative low-risk markets. In spite of a cash shortage in different sectors, the government, we said, has made up and more for its expenditure budget. But it is important that liquidity be invested in production, because that works as a balancing factor in the economy. Excess liquidity only feeds an inflation already inflated to over 40%. The administration has not been serious in tackling the issue of money stock which it has caused. The administration created such money stock through bank credit. It's now at 27,000 trillion rials. This figure stood at 450,000 trillion rials when President Hassan Rouhani took over from Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Now, the seed that put down roots and stemmed into an unhealthy economy, economists insist, is the depreciating or at best fluctuating real. Depreciation of national currency is a major weakness of every administration, showing the weakness of national economy and identity. It has occurred and we have witnessed the regular depreciation of national currency. The administration did not exercise any correct management for its hard currency reserves. An administration believing in economic war had to develop a plan instead of letting hard currency reserves being squandered away. We've come to that moment when it's time to look at Iran through the eyes of the world and other media outlets. For that, I give you Shahzad. Hi, my name is Shahzad Manucheri, and we'll be reviewing the latest updates on Rouhani's challenges in his final year in office. The Middle East Monitor reveals Rouhani states, new U.S. sanctions cruel, terrorist, and inhumane. Rouhani characterized the sanctions as attempts to create serious obstacles in fund transfers for medicine and food, and called on the world's human rights advocates to condemn the move. All countries witness that America's attempts are completely against international laws and regulations, and in the time of the coronavirus are against human rights, Reuters reports Rouhani stating on his official website. Rouhani added, the Americans have so far done all they could against the great nation of Iran. They cannot break the resistance of the Iranian nation with these inhumane actions, accusing U.S. President Donald Trump's administration of following domestic aims with such political propaganda attempts. 
President Rouhani claims Iran's economy outperforming Germany as over 60 million Iranians receive state assistance. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has said that his country's economy has performed better than advanced economies such as Germany during the coronavirus pandemic, at a time that more than 60 million Iranians rely on government handouts to survive. While the economy of an advanced country like Germany has faced problems because of the coronavirus outbreak, our economy has better conditions thanks to the efforts by production companies and economic sectors, Rouhani said during a meeting of the coronavirus task force. Iran's economy is in a dire shape mainly due to mismanagement, U.S. sanctions, low oil prices, and the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. The economy is expected to contract by a whopping 12% in 2020, leaving hundreds of thousands of workers unemployed or in desperate need of government subsidies. In an article by Iran Focus, we see claims that Iran's economic collapse has not happened so far. The governor of the Central Bank of Iran, CBI, Abdul Nasser Hemati, wrote on his online page that he has not allowed the perpetrators of the sanctions to achieve their main goal in the last two years, which was the collapse of the country's economy. He has promised to explain the reasons for the rise in the exchange rate in recent weeks in a timely manner, but for the time being, he has acknowledged that these days, after the trigger mechanism is proposed, there are rumors about the complete disconnection of the Iranian financial system from the world. He admitted that regardless of its operational capability and the extent of the practical impact, its psychological impact on the foreign exchange has unfortunately overshadowed the market. Although Hemmati, the head of the CBI, did not provide a precise definition of economic collapse and its consequences in the country, the remarkable point is that in these words are expressed by one of the most important economic officials of the government. That's all for this segment. We'll see you next week. As far as national budget goes, Rouhani proposed the resistance budget to offset Trump's maximum pressure campaign because sanctions did send oil sales plummeting 90 percent. Iran has the world's fourth largest crude oil reserves and second largest natural gas reserves. And 40 percent of Iran's total government budget relied on oil receipts. That translates as vulnerability as it begets low growth performance, considerable shrinking of fiscal space, and overall pro-cyclical fiscal policies. As you know, one of the most uh, important conventional problems of the Iranian economy has been the dependence of government's budget on the export of crude oil and, and gas. Uh, during the last years, this unfavorable dependency has degre decreased uh, about seven times. So we see that now the dollars of the oil and uh, gas in the budget are very low. According to the sixth economic development plan, Iran's dependence on petroleum export revenues will be reduced to 20% by 2022 and eliminated by 2024. I asked what's the best way to curb inflation and liquidity and to increase the value of the real against foreign currencies and what might be the problems before implementing the above. What are these domestic factors? First, our money stock growth is racing ahead. The growth in money stock has led to inflation in Iran's economy. The inflation is growing at a more than 30% rate. As there is economic contraction, the problem comes out in inflation. That is caused by the administration's financial indiscipline like imbalance in the naming system, high interest rates, administration's debts to banks, generation of money by banks and imbalance in the hard currency system. We had to consider credit rating for exporters and importers so that they would meet necessary qualifications. Again, to offset the ravages of sanctions, the Rouhani government has aimed to develop internal markets, cultivate new revenue streams and cut subsidies. For one thing, energy in Iran is heavily subsidized. And with the soaring cost of living, society has a tendency to erupt with petrol price spikes. So scrapping energy subsidies is risky. And food basket subsidies are just a fraction of hidden wealth in this country. 
دولت وقتی که تورم 41 و 2 درصد بود. The administration set the banking interest rate at 15% in 2019 when the inflation rate was at 41.2%. The depositor will see his purchase power fall by 26.2% if he deposits his capital in the bank. The current calendar year was named year of production jump. But what has the administration done to that effect? With sanctions are depreciating local currency and inflation, the first to get hit the hardest is the man on the street. And that's why we've come out to see what the people have to say. The depreciation of the national currency, real, has affected us. People see their purchasing power has declined and their budget has been limited. They have to cut some of their spendings. I'm a student. Now I'm thinking of a job and family in the future. The current situation is a real cause of concern for me in making my ends meet. As a human being, I have accepted the fact that in Iran or everywhere else there are some economic problems. I have to admit that in Iran, like everywhere else, there are both hardships and relaxations. Eventually, sanctions are not ineffective. External pressure on a nation leaves impact. There have also been some domestic problems as some officials may prefer to see the country remain stagnated. Mismanagement is the main reason behind our problems in the country, I think. The administration has not been successful at all. I lay the blame on the current administration mainly. During four decades following the Islamic Revolution, we have shown that we don't need foreign help and fare better than others. Our officials should trust the potential of our own youth. If there was correct management since 10 or 20 years ago when the country was flush with hard currency, the current sanctions would not be so much effective. Cost cutting is just one of Iran's responses. Observers say Iran's strategy has evolved from waiting out sanctions to compelling relief by upping the geopolitical ante for Washington and allies. In other words, by making U.S. interests in the region more trouble than they're worth. Now, where subsidies are not easy to scrap, taxing can come into effect. But again, tremendous ill-gotten gains tend to evade taxation and they haven't been easy to track down. Some experts believe that all governments' adherence to sanctions in their final years has been a way to escape accountability. Now, Rouhani is not far from right when he says this country is experiencing its toughest year because of U.S. sanctions coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic. What the president says of his government is that we made promises in time of peace and then unexpectedly entered a war we did not start. By war, he means the U.S.'s war of sanctions. Siege warfare on this nation, if you like, which is against international norms. And his peacetime election promises were to boost the country's defenses, while at the same time seeing to the cost of people's living. Even then, Rouhani did not receive a socially and economically stable country from the former administration, however. We are talking 2013, the start of his first term in office. He got the JCPOA or nuclear deal signed in 2015 to give the economy a boost. Sure enough, in accordance with the deal, economic nuclear-related UN sanctions were lifted off Iran in 2016. But two years later, President Trump unilaterally binned the international deal between Iran and the UN Security Council, which includes the US. And he reimposed and reinforced UN sanctions as US sanctions. But economists still don't excuse Rouhani easily. The JCPOA, which relied on national consensus, was the outcome of intensive talks between the Iranian administration and six world powers, known as the P5 plus one. Iran sat at the negotiating table with world powers leading to the JCPOA. It was the strength of our diplomacy. But the administration should not have spent all its energy on the JCPOA. The Rouhani administration had to take steps for improving domestic economic conditions. Unfortunately, no step was taken to that effect.
I feel that the administration has missed the JCPOA opportunity. It was a unique chance for Iran's economy for four to five years in order to carry out necessary fundamental structural and institutional reforms. Time to say bye, but that's just for today. We'll be back at the same time next week and each week after, so do watch and don't forget to leave your comments and topic requests.